My guest today is well loved by Broadway fans for his work on Aliens vs. Predator Requiem oh, and some musicals like Bridges of Madison County and maybe Carousel. He's right. currently starring in the joyful off Broadway revival of The Robber Bridegroom. Here he is, The Robber Bridegroom, Stephen Pasquale. That was my favorite introduction ever. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad. By the way, when we do Alien vs. Predator Requiem, the musical, that's when you really want to get your ticket. <laughs> it, finally, all the Broadway fans will finally, yeah. finally. That's totally. that's what they want, not Carousel on Broadway. New. They no. want that. AVP. Record. What's up, man? How are you? How are you? You I'm just great. opened in I'm a, a. I'm a little a, hot. You've got some sort of like Guantanamo Bay torture chamber device. Yeah, so we're, just, we're we're turning up summer. Yeah. We, have, we have a broken air conditioner in here, You're gonna which sweat actually no, all the nobody watching this can tell that. You can't tell. So you just had to reveal that. Except for the. the, the and the I will also reveal Stephen Pasquale does not ever wear makeup. <coughs> I prefer not to. And I sometimes do. Ever on TV or anything. But you can't tell. And I will say, if you get too hot, there'd be nothing wrong traffic-wise with you taking off your outer layer. <laughs> I'm sure the fans, the Bridges of Madison County fans, would yep. be totally fine with that. We're, we're planning on this interview taking <laughs> that kind of turn. <laughs> so anyway, could we do this interview? Yes. Oh, how's it going? It's so good. <laughs> yeah? I'm having the best time So, ever. yeah, that is a fu super fun show. It's the most fun I've... Ever had? Shut up! Really? You just, just yeah. saying that? Yeah. I mean, this I is the most fun. The most. Fun. So anyone who ever worked with you over the years who thought like that West Side Story cast on the road, that they're was all like, fun. dude, that was so much fun. Well, you're you, like, with nope. Me, with me as Guitar, the non-dancing jet. Oh, my, uh, were you the non-dancing guy? Guitar. I was the Tony Understudy slash jet who doesn't dance. Is that a regular thing? That role never yeah, dances. Guitar. I didn't, actually didn't know that. I always loved that guy's name. G E E. It's weird. Dash T A R. Not even like guitar, but guitar. Anyway, that was fun. But this I always is thought he should have a guitar. <laughs> yeah, just like, randomly. Yeah, that'd be in fun. The, in the late 50s. Just random scenes. We are having the best time at the Pels. It's the most fun I've ever had, truly. It looks um, like you guys actually really like each other. Like, it's one of those shows where yeah. you watch it and you go, they look like they're having fun together. Is that total BS? Or? It's total BS. We yeah. are like, it's just catfighting <laughs> backstage like you would not could not imagine. No, it's amazing. We, everybody is essential to everybody else. So yeah. if you're like not paying attention for one second, you'll drop the ball for somebody else. Uh, right. And that kind of like team playing is really rare and fun and we're having a great time. Is God, it? I was uh, so serious, my answer. And it's a very ensemble show, so. Yeah. I mean, there's clearly a star, but Stephen relatively Pasquale within in. that, it does feel a little ensemble. Yeah, it is, does, you know, like, like I think they like make you move set pieces maybe. Yeah. And you have I'm to like stand in the background while other people do things. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. so challenging. I love it, I love it. It's the most, that's the most fun Part of the show is when you are participating peripherally in somebody else's sort of central moment. Yeah. Um, because we all just want to be there for each other and be precise. And we're all like exhausted and slightly old and out of shape. And we're just sort of <laughs> like, you know, we're being like trees and we're like huffing and puffing and looking at each other like, are you on two? I'm on two. I'm supposed to be on two left. Are you on two right? Is this tree, is this tree line perfect? And it's like an enormous amount of comedy pressure. We you get to play trees. Yeah. That's, that's, trees, that's rare. Rocks, that's branches. rare. Yeah. I, now this show, did, did you know this? Show? I actually got to see this show like, a year ago at a really small theater upstate. Oh, really? Shout out to that cast up in uh, Phoenicia, New York. How was that production? It was so much fun, and I thought, why isn't this show back in New <laughs> York? And apparently Alex Timbers has been trying to director Alex Timbers of um, f upcoming Frozen fame. Never heard of him. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Uh, he's been wanting to do this show for a really long time. Yeah, he's been obsessed with it since college, and he has had sort of a vision for it, you know, in that classic, I like to say Timbersian, uh, way, which is like super clever, really imaginative, yeah. uh, great actors being protean storytellers. And that was his pitch and the idea of nine people telling this like southern fried fairy tale yeah. with this incredible bluegrass score sounded really fun to me. I was unfamiliar with it as well and yeah. I pride myself on being a pretty big nerd in terms of, you know, the musical canon. Well, people know the Patti Lapone connection. That's, that's yeah. what people know. Sure. Usually yeah, sleepy, we gotta get Patti to come. And apparently she was naked in it. Somebody told me she was... I'm, I believe it. Yeah. I mean, it was the early 70s. I mean, people were like always naked. People... <laughs> I don't think you could be on Broadway without being totally naked. In you haven't 70s. done naked yet, have you? No, only is, partial nudity. Is that uh, what partially, partial meaning your chest? Just <laughs> upper body. I have <laughs> really thin legs. I'm not willing to Does upper body off. actually count as partial nudity? No, probably right. not. <laughs> probably not. Probably so not. are you open to that? Is that... I don't know, it depends on the role, Paul. It depends on the role the and the temperature the in the studio. Yeah, like totally. <laughs> like this is going to be full nudity in one second. It's like, there, get Mo Bay in here. It's um, like, that, you'll be all right, you'll be all right. So who's this guy? You're playing Jamie, right? He's like a, <laughs> he's a bandit. I play Jamie Lockhart who has two faces. And by day, he is a sort of gentleman con man. And by night, he is the bandit of the woods. So dangerous, so and scary. The only differ, oh, the only difference between the two is two slight <laughs> swipes of berry stains 
that come from uh, juices of the wild blackberry out of the so forest. It's so badass. It's so weird in the best <laughs> way. I read this play and I called Alex Timbers and I was like, I think you're a genius, but this is the weirdest thing I've ever read. <laughs> he was like, just trust me, we're gonna have the best time. You're gonna get to be really silly, which I don't get asked to do a lot on stage. Yeah. And so we have had the best time making this crazy thing. Yeah, so it's, so it's fun to be, uh, you're not country either, you're not from the South. I mean, you're no, like from, from Pennsylvania. So yeah, Pennsylvania. I mean, sort of bluegrass uh, music, I'm fond of it, but was not certainly something that I'm super familiar with. Now, are you actually a bridegroom? What A bridegroom means you're like a guy about to get married. Isn't um, it? Know what that means? Is that what that means? Can we phone a friend? <laughs> what is a bridegroom, you guys? Hang on, let me call. You recently somebody. got engaged. That's what I'm trying to get to. Um, I did. How about that? You made a, you made a social media announcement. It's so hot in here that this water was not even boiled. It's just actually that the room, <laughs> the room temperature in here is boiling, <laughs> steaming hot water. So this is the hottest show people interview ever. That's how we're yeah. going to promote it. Yeah, the hottest. Steven literally, Pasquale, the hottest <laughs> interview ever. Yeah, they are temperature hot. <laughs> yeah. Room temperature. The most uncomfortably hot interview ever. <laughs> <laughs> so don't change the subject. Back to that. Recently you, um, engaged to the there's, there's this little show called suit. Hamilton. Yeah. And a lot of people uh, have I, fallen in love. Yeah. And I want to talk about it a lot because we need help. They need to drum up. They, some they need, they need to drum up some yeah. business. So uh, they're not selling any tickets. And there's this tickets. pretty lady named Philippa Sue. Correct. And the Broadway community has fallen in love with her, and you actually have fallen in love with her. I have actually. I'm making an assumption based on your engagement. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> we're we actually have fallen in love. And That's she's amazing. Quite Congratulations. Yeah, she's an amazing lady, and she's you know a great artist but yeah. uh, I didn't know that of her. That was sort of a fun yeah. discovery. So now I have a talent crush. And friends call your crush. talent crush. Okay, and friends yeah. call her Pippa. Pippa. Correct. Do you call her Pippa? I call her Pippa. Okay, that is... That and is occasionally I call her Philippa. If the conversation is really serious, I'll be like, That's Philippa, what do you think? <laughs> so the engagement maybe was a Philippa conversation? Yeah, it was like, Philippa? <laughs> this is how I feel about you. <laughs> and she's going to love this, by the way. You've done uh, the engagement thing before. You've done the marriage thing before. But Correct. What, but you like. I definitely you, want to talk about that a lot. We don't. We don't. Well, you can. You can. Okay. You can say whatever you want. Uh, I would. I'm well, actually. My goal. All the my goal is to eventually make someone walk out. So if you <laughs> yeah. want to, if you want to just pull that off, I'm down with yeah. that. Yeah. No, it's cool. Uh, eventually, I'm just going to be closed on this chair because I'm going to sweat into like a bag of bones. You'll be all right. So uh, for the um, how many how many ladies? Fifth marriage. How, fifth. It's fifth marriage. <laughs> it is not your fifth marriage. Um, you, for all the ladies who saw Bridges of Madison County and maybe wondered how they get the attention of Stephen Pasquale, uh, what, what, how, do, how does somebody like Pippa? Well, Jonathan Groff, the great and incomparable Jonathan yeah. Groff, thought it would be a great idea. For he hooked it up. Philip and I. Groff to hooked it up. Meet. Yeah. Groff wow, I didn't know he was in that business. Yeah. So we, for our first like ten dates, at the end of the date, we'd be like, "Good job, Jonathan Groff," and we would like send him a picture of wow. us. Like out on the town together. So did you tell him first that you were uh, getting engaged? Yeah, we told him first, and he's gonna marry us. Wow! So this is he really? Charming. Yeah, we're gonna have. Uh, like is this a joke? Him. No, he's. Jonathan Grav is like learning how to marry people. He's gonna. Well, he's not. I think available for all of you, but he <laughs> is available to us. So na 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 boo boo. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. We're, is it gonna we're, happen on the stage of Hamilton, or? It probably will happen at intermission at Hamilton really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like don't want to, don't want to. The union rules start to kick in at a certain point, so it, we can't take too much. It's kind time. of like you're part of the Hamilton family. You're like an offshoot. Yeah. Well, Lynn and I were friends years ago, working on a really bad television show together. Was it was it officially bad? I mean, I didn't I didn't spend much time on it, but it was pretty bad. It was called uh, it was that Jekyll and Hyde show. Do For no a harm. brief moment, I'm going to go ahead and say it was the lowest rated television network premiere of a drama in the history yeah, I of remember television writing that since news. the advent of the Nielsen box. Wow. We were unseated two weeks later by that turd that Anthony Edwards made on ABC, uh, which I can't remember the name for. But for two weeks, we Wait, were oh really? Oh, that record yeah. actually did. Yeah, oh, it lasted two weeks. I'm glad. I'm glad. So <laughs> I'm glad that you <gasps> had that on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I got I got to wear that crown for a minute. But you had your face all over that. Mm -hmm. That was your. I remember your face was all well, over the. The ad was my face on my hands. So my oh friends, right, it was creepy. My friends would text me and be like, "Is your show about a guy with a face on his hands?" <laughs> and I'd be like, "No." <laughs> Strangely, it's Which kind of Jack probably would have done a little better. Yeah, yeah. that might that have been good. An indication that maybe we were off to not a great start. <laughs> a show about a guy with a face on his hands. So you weird. And, you and Lynn, uh, the genius Lynn Manuel Miranda, were on this show together. We were on that show together. We were having a great time at work, theater nerding out, and just talking about all the people we love in the theater. And he was like, "I'm writing this thing called Hamilton." Right. I feel like I was one of the first. I don't know, five people to hear any of those songs. I'm sure you were. That's amazing. And I remember listening to one and and being like, really like calmly and coolly saying like, "This is really good, man. You should keep writing this. Keep working on it." So I take credit. Dude, you <laughs> totally deserve a cut of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge cut. You're all over that. Yeah. Well, you got a wife. I mean, like that's pretty good. <clears throat> I got a wife out of the deal. So then did he? Uh, then and then did he say, "I'm going to write this role," 
and I'm going to find like a beautiful woman and she's going to fall in love with you. Did he, that, was that all worked out on the set of that show? <laughs> yeah, like, he, he planned my life. For, he, he doesn't totally just write worked. musicals. <laughs> he planned my entire life for me for the next five years. No, actually he is not responsible for me meeting Philip at all. That's all Jonathan Groff. It just happened yeah. to sort of be once he was like, crazy. once I showed up to pick her up like five nights in a row, he was like, you really love my show. Well, and I was like, I'm, I'm just taking Pip out for a drink. Wow. And then he yeah. pulled her aside and said, look out. Yeah. He was like, don't you dare. That guy's a disaster. <laughs> so when you were filming that show, were you, got, were you like, how many episodes did you actually film? I felt like were there we some episodes that never aired? 150. <laughs> but I think it was ultimately only 13. But did they all air eventually? I think they called, they, they, they do what they call burning it off, which is they show it at like a million o'clock at night <laughs> on like <laughs> Wednesdays in the middle of the summer when everyone's like dead asleep. Okay, so eventually the fans yeah. got to just... Midsummer, sort of like it feels in here <laughs> today. <laughs> About 120 <laughs> degrees, tons of humidity. But were you, no, it's cool, were I got my thermal waffle shirt on, it's were great. You got, again, they're, they're, they're willing to look at more of it. <laughs> right, right. Um, it, were you guys sitting there like going, this show sucks? Or were you like, this is totally going to be my thing? No, we thought like it had a chance to be sort of pulpy and fun and right, soapy. Right. You can't tell And then people I like. was like, it's kind of, this kind of sucks. Right. Yeah. Right. Let's get back to the theater. Lynn. So, so we wrote this great show and wow. I went to do a bunch of theater after that. And um, now I see him like on 46th Street because we're both on 46th Street. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Pretty, um, pretty small world. So you, you mentioned already you're from uh, Pennsylvania. Yep. And you're one of those guys who... I hear this story a lot. I hear that like, oh God, I was just like an athlete, man. And then like, I hurt myself. So I did a musical. That's like a common Did you pull story. that exactly from what you've seen me it, say that's that before? true, right? Or you like saying other guys say I've that I've done too. my research, but I've heard that many <laughs> times. That's always like, the straight guy's always like, well, I was in football, but then yeah. I hurt my leg and all I could do was a musical. Hurt my back. Hurt my back. All I, could, I couldn't play football anymore. And my friend Mike was like, come and do the play. It's really fun. It was Fame, the musical, right, and I played, played Tyrone. Unlikely role of Tyrone. Yep, the black kid dancing black kid. his way to the top of the Big <laughs> Apple. Just and he sings that song. Every right? day I wake up in the morning. Except I didn't know how to sing, so I was just assuming that vibrato was like something you had to insert into every note because like oh. I didn't really know anything about it. So I gave every note four vibratos. So I'd be like, every day I wake up in the morning. Awesome. So by the end of the show, I had like exactly symmetrical amount of vibratos. It was, this was, it was early school. days. Did, yeah. the, did the AV department film? The show? Oh yeah, there's footage. There's footage. There's footage that yeah. you will has never Pippa seen it. <laughs> she has seen it. In she a, has seen I it. Think she what date number was that? And a whiskey, um, <laughs> a whiskey-filled evening. She was like, whiskey. "Please show me okay. you in fame." And I was like, "Will you still like me if I show you?" Was, was that like, sort promise. of like the final thing? Like, if, if I if I have the balls to show her my Tyrone, I think so. He wasn't named Tyrone. He was named Leroy in the film, but for some reason in the stage had a. Oh, you called him Tyrone though. I thought you had like a. a oh no, we called him. Tyrone. No, I didn't. Okay, even, they didn't even okay, change okay. His, his name to like a white dude. <laughs> That's like Tyrone. Yeah. I, so, yeah. You said if she can handle the Tyrone footage, uh, I'm gonna <clears> marry this lady. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, get ready. <laughs> this is like my Watergate moment. I'm gonna show you this horrible footage, and if you don't leave. And then all of a sudden, I'm, you I'm started like auditioning for real shows and getting cast. Just like people would be like, yeah, yeah, him. Let's get him, right? You did tours. I did tours. I came to New York. You on were young. Gym. Yeah, I was 18 years old. Yeah. And I did one audition, and it was for the National Tour of West Side Story, and I got that job. And that I was guy, like, this show is easy. You were guitar, guitar, gu yeah, you it was guitar. Yeah, was guitar. I was yeah. on the road with West Side Story. Christian Borel was our riff. What? In I that didn't know tour. that. Oh, yeah, Natasha Diaz. Christian Borel's riff. riff. Yeah. Wow, okay. That's great. Natasha Diaz, you said? Natasha Diaz was our Anita. We had, like, she, amazing she's, people. She's a great Anita. Josh she Bergas Anita. was our baby John. Wow. That tour was chock full. This uh, cast, wow. Yeah, so I did that for a year, and then I went to New York on another audition and booked the role of Chris and Miss Saigon. So and what were you like out on the road, that teenage boy out on the road? Oh, I was such a disaster. I was from such a small town. I'd never like seen a, or spent time in a, a big city with great food and interesting people. I was just like completely compelled Super by naive. everything. Super naive. Yeah. Had to learn how to sing, how to teach myself how to sing, how to teach myself how to maintain a performance eight shows a week. It was like the most invaluable kind of on-the-job conservatory training that an 18-year-old could possibly have experienced. But I was on the road for like three and a half years when everyone else my age was in school or college or conservative. Now when you work with um, like let's say like a Kelly O'Hara, right? Uh -huh. She did Hack. that. She did that. <laughs> right? Oh, we're going to talk about all the untalented people that I've worked with? Great. No, that list is long. I feel like somebody like her is super trained like in super music. Trained. Oh, so stuffy. And then stuffy. you're just like some like football guy who hurt yeah. his back and then yeah. like can r randomly sing beautifully. She's like, "What is that note you're singing there?" I'm like, "I don't know, but yeah, tell me how high it is or it'll make me scared." So, so <laughs> 
So how like, about that? Like, do they just like hate the fact that <clears throat> you're so just like naturally amazing? <laughs> is that what it is? Well, when you put it that way, <laughs> I can't imagine not hating it. By the way, who did you like knock down a flight of stairs to not get Tony nominated for Bridges of Master County? You're so nice. Who do I have to talk to? This was, can we do, can there a... You know, it was a great lesson what? in like a bunch of people were saying like, get ready, you're gonna have to get a Tony Get movie. ready. And so it was a great lesson in like detaching from that stuff. You can't, you know, that's really like stuff that's out of your control. And people that I respect love that show and yeah. my work in it and that's all that. You know what's funny though? That's all that matters. I hated those. But here's the funny part. I thought you had one. You could probably just put it in your bio and pe people forget. Yeah. People forget. You know what I won a Tony for? The National Touring Company of West Side Story. I was Guitar the Non-Dancing Jet. <laughs> I won a Tony Award for most non-dancing jet in the touring company. That should be a West category. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Paul, but I want to talk about all these things that make me feel like I want to cry. What other negative things can we bring up? What things, what things make you uncomfortable to talk about? <laughs> you seem kind of like a private guy. I'm pretty private. You're, yeah. You get the exception. Very few are allowed to talk I'm about get, I'm getting like a real open version of you. Yeah, you're I getting the that. James Lipton. So I feel like I should just take advantage of you're that. You're getting the James Lipton right now. <laughs> <laughs> Except we're not talking about you, which is what ends up happening on the James Lipton <laughs> show. He's like, when I got my pilot's license. I know something kind of private I want to talk about. Oh, God. Can we Paul. talk about uh, your beautiful daughter, Maddie? Yes, we she's can. She's like an adult. <laughs> you look like an adult child. My incredible daughter, Maddie. She's, uh, she's at Bennington College right now, having the best time and learning all about the world and studying really awesome. cool, interesting things. And she's the best. Does she like seeing your Broadway stuff? Like, she, does she? Yeah, I think she thinks it's cool. But, you know, we're in that sort of time where it's like, you can't really say that it's cool. You just can come and, like, be there. Got it. You know, okay. like, in play, the support. Play but it's like, cool. Not a lot of talking about how cool it is. It's funny because you're a pretty young guy. Yep. And you have like a grown daughter. You had her really <coughs> young. Yeah. And it must I'm be. I'm 39 and I have a 19 year old. Right. So do the math. So I mean, just, uh, we just were very just get your young. calculators out and figure out how we old he was. We were very young and it was like the most informative uh, and, and um, sort of soulful experience I could have had as a young person. It is like led me to yeah. absolutely to sort of the person that I am today. It's amazing that... It was basically a wreck and a disaster of a man and a shell of a human. No. You were then? No, I was just a disaster as a <laughs> kid. And, and, yeah. and, her, and the experience of her in my life has really like been the great driving force But you must have life. friends who are now entering like yeah, adult like like Celia has parent, like a six parenting, month old. right? And you're like, dude, I... Uh, I'm, like, I'm like, give me that baby. Let me show you how to do this. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. you're like such a pro. My friends who have babies are like, Steve is so good with babies. I was like, yeah, I've been doing it since I was 18. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. She's an amazing kid, m my Maddie. She's, uh, she's the best. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah, so what are the private things should we, do we want to know about you? I love my super weird flamboyant pink plaid pajama bottoms. Oh, really? Are you a pajama guy? Just the bottoms. I love the I love the like partial, super partial nudity. <laughs> partial nudity. Yeah. And when I go to the coffee shop, they're like, "You couldn't even get dressed today, Steve," because I live really close to the coffee shop. And they're like, "There's weirdo. There's the weirdo guy in his, in his floral pink pajama bottoms." So how long is it gonna take Groff to learn how to do a marriage? Like, how how long do you think it's gonna take? I don't take? know. We t Pip and I talked to him about it. I think it'll take a couple hours. To like online train. So he could do it like tonight. But he's like, I'm totally into it. He, he, but he kind of committed without knowing how long it takes. So what if it's like six weeks of like monastery training or something? What if he's like secretly trying to figure out how to get out of it? Which is possible. <laughs> hey, Groff, Which just is do totally it. Possible. Yeah, yeah. No, we're super excited about it. Are you such a, uh, what are Hamilton fans called? Ha Hamilton call fans? Them? Sure. They're pretty yeah. crazy. Do you, can you like step into that show, you think? Can you, uh, can you do any of that? I tried to get Lynn to let me play Burr when he was first writing it. He was just like, basically like pretended I didn't say it every time I was said it. <laughs> he'd, he'd be like, yeah, I'm writing this amazing, it's gonna be great, I don't know who I'm gonna get it. And I'd be like, I'll totally do it. And he'd be like, yeah, I'm just trying to think about who it should be. And yeah, the Do No Harm like, fans would have loved that. Oh, they you two reunited on stage? Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> that would have been incredible. No, it's the, you know, the, the great success of that show is that it is as good as everyone says it is. So it's, it's true, It's just yeah. truly like a once in a lifetime kind of situation over there. So, Robert Bradgroom, Right. Is running how long? How long are you down there? A couple months. I think we're down there till the end of May. Good. I think it's like till like my birthday, more or less. Which is? The end of May. End of May? May 29. Gemini. Is that your final performance? Is that Gemini? Gemini. A little two-faced sometimes? A little do no harm. Yep. A little Jekyll A little bandit by night. Gentleman. Uh, is it like Robert, am I a Robert Bridegroom? Yes, Just potentially. Two, two, what two is it, berry juice? Two swipes of berry juice. What are you moment. using on your face to that for that moment? We're using, um, I have no idea, Paul. Makeup, I don't, makeup, some sort of makeup, some stuff. You don't ask. That looks good and comes off pretty. You easy. don't even. Is that actually? You do wear makeup. You're. A, 
a liar. That's true. You were You're very, right. very lying. But we did have to change it because the first week after previews, it was actually staining my face, and so I would go home at night. And that would have like, been terrible. Looked like somebody had just like bitch slapped me <laughs> on one side of my face <laughs> every night. People was like, "Did you? Did somebody punch you in the face?" I was like, "Oh, my fairy stains are staining my cheeks." That's terrible. Uh, um, yeah, so you are on my DVR right now because you're on that OJ show, man. I am. That's like a huge hit. Huge. You're hit. Mark Berman, who's like, first of all, Such I was a obs- quality dude. I was so obsessed with OJ like, <clears throat> at the time. Like oh. I lived it. Like, did, did you? Were you like? I was right. I was like right at the age where I was aware of its but not hugeness, quite. But not quite like tuning. Oh my in god! Every day. I read every book. I watched every day. Of the did track. you read I was Furman's obsessed book? Obsessed with it. Yeah. Totally. What do you think? And Furman, well, Furman's like this this weird guy because... The weird guy whose police work is fine. Right. But you can't feel the way you feel about the world and right. have anyone take what you say seriously. <laughs> right, right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, the, the word racist comes up. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, those tapes are damning. Was it fun so? to do that show, to work? Did what, Well, amazing people. Sarah Paulson. And yeah, oh my Courtney God. I know. And Brian Jones Murphy people. casts like yeah. the best people. Like, like... You know. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, Ryan is um, really smart, and he's got a great. He's got his finger on the pulse of what the next wave of great television is going to be, and he seems yeah. to be able to do that like every couple of years. And so he just called me and said, I, "I think you'd be good in this." And you know, does it interest you? I was like, "Yeah, yeah. are you kidding me?" So I feel like he casts his shows like from the audience of Broadway musicals or something. It's he's great. a lover of theater, and you know yeah. what? Some of our great actors are theater actors, so I think that's why they pop up in Ryan Murphy shows a lot. And I think back to like 20 years ago when so many people I loved on Broadway couldn't get work on TV and film. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now yeah. it's like such a whole, a whole different game. It's a really different thing now. Yeah. yeah. So do you want? Is are you always like looking for the next cool TV thing? No. Too? I'm really not. I'm looking for the next cool theater thing, and then I try to um, s- support and fund that habit with TV. Cool. Um, because yeah. a lot of the good theater happens like off Broadway or yeah. in, in a limited way, and so it's hard to make a living. Um, so I try to think of TV and film as my funding my theater habit. I was excited when I read that you said Stanley was a dream role in Streetcar. Yeah, Philip and I want to do that together. Actually. Oh. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I like that, that a lot. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? Do you guys do it at home together? You're like yeah, we just like scream at each other. <laughs> I'm the king of this castle, and I throw like a piece of salami across the room. <laughs> Stanley, Stanley's a good role. It's good, and I feel like that film is so beloved, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, you would know better than me if there's ever been like a great revisit of that mm-hmm. show in like a successful way, and so maybe the time could be right soon. I don't know. So you already said your age, so I'm glad because I don't have to say it. You're 39. 39. You're, you're turning 40 in the fall. <laughs> in the fall, November. Any, what, what do you have to get done? You said you're running out of time before oh the 40s. Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. You know what? I, I live such a fortunate life. I'm just like happy to be uh, you know, having a good time at this point. I made a goal for myself as a young actor to be able to stay in New York. And looking back on the last 17 years being in New York this entire time, I just feel like that to me is uh, success. So I, I'm really excited about being 40 and being home for it. Awesome. Well, I'm excited that you're finally here. Thanks, man. And I'm so sorry about the air conditioning. Next time like you're here. I feel like now that we're at the very end of the interview, the air conditioning in. just kicked on, like, just it's, to it's sort of torture in. me. I just uh, like, Everyone, a check out the Robert Bridegroom. This guy's phenomenal. Uh, Leslie Kritzer might give you a lap dance. I got one when I went. Mm, she's giving him out. So many great people in that cast. Anna O'Reilly, Greg Hildreth. Rank the, them the, from favorite to least. Oh, no, my God. <laughs> that's really hard to do. <laughs> They're all amazing yeah. uh, and new friends and like super high skill actors and generous people and we're having the best time. And Alex was a dream too. So yeah, uh, yeah, come and see it. It's really fun. It's so it's super fun. I hope you guys get to record it. That'd be good. I think we're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're gonna. We just have to figure. You heard out. it here. It's gonna be produced by Broadway.com and Paul. We just need to come <laughs> up with some funds, and uh, then we're gonna record it. Thank you so much, Steven. Thank you. you. You were a charming guest. I love show people. Thank you for thank you for How saying. How do you pr- exactly pronounce your last name? Wontorek. Wontorek. Ah. Oh. No problem, Pasquale. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch, my knee. Everyone, check out the Robert Bridegroom, <laughs> and he's back. Yeah. Check out Robert Bridegroom at the Laura. Pell's Theater, now through the end of May. Please, thank you. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Paul.